I'm Denise LaFrance, next on City Beats. One of the city's community centers closed due to carbon monoxide. Find out why the city was proactive in finding it and how we're keeping our other centers safe. After almost 15 years, a new fire station's going up. We'll tell you why this new station may save you some money. If you're a business owner, codes may be stopping at your door. We're gearing up for a new campaign. Hear how business owners play a role. These stories and more next. Hello and welcome to City Beat for the month of February. The city's Munson Center is back open after city officials closed it last month when carbon monoxide was detected. Everything in the center has been fixed thanks to the good work of the city, which not only carefully takes care of the Munson Center, but all other community and recreation centers as well. And we just feel very fortunate that none of our seniors were hurt at all because this blessedly happened before we opened the building. <laughs> Senior Programs Administrator Lori Gramey says long days and many hours were put into finding the source of a carbon monoxide leak at the Munson Center in January. The leak caused the center to close for days while crews worked around the clock to make the center safe once again for its patrons. When the alarms went off, the staff recognized they had to do something right away. And we called 911 and the fire department responded within minutes. We got everyone out of the building, so um, we didn't have any uh, serious casualties. And that was our fear because you cannot see, smell, or taste the gas. An outside engineer, technicians, and city crews found the leak to come from many sources. One was the kitchen hood over the gas range. Another issue had to do with the controllers that communicate between the blower, the air handling blower, and the actual boiler that heats the water that warms the air. Uh, and there was some fault either with a computer chip that may have been subjected to an electrical surge of some kind. And there was no way to detect that that programming was damaged or missing. So that has been corrected. Grimme says what also helped was the many carbon monoxide detectors that were already put in place before the leak occurred. The detector went off before the center was opened and before any residents were inside the building. Assured by the fire marshal that the building is safe, the technicians have reviewed the equipment with experts and made the appropriate repairs. The city says the prevention measures such as these are what help to keep the issue from becoming something bigger. And to further protect its patrons, even more steps have been added. And we believe that the steps that we have taken now make the, the building reasonably safe. And so uh, a citizen should not have um, a concern, in my opinion, as far as coming down and actually using the building because of the safeguards we have in place now. The other thing that's happened is we put in additional carbon monoxide alarms and additional protocols to make sure that we don't have a recurrence in the future. While the Munson Center was closed, the kitchen's hood range was cleaned and serviced and the vent motor was replaced. The center is located at 975 South Mesquite. As we mentioned, the main thing that kept our patrons at the Munson Center safe was the presence of carbon monoxide detectors. This is a good reminder for all of us to have those detectors in our homes. Carbon monoxide is an odorless, colorless, and toxic gas. Because it's hard to detect, residents are encouraged to buy carbon monoxide detectors. The gas can cause flu-like symptoms with low levels of exposure. Babies, children, and the elderly are at a greater risk of poisoning. The gas can come from gas-fired appliances, wood-burning fireplaces, charcoal grills, and a running car. They look very similar to a smoke detector. They just function a little bit differently. They are available, widely available at really any of your large retailers. And there's all types of different brands. As long as you're buying something from a reputable dealer, not buying it out of the back of someone's uh, car, well, I think you'll be okay. And, and all the installation instructions are, are right there. If you have any questions, you can contact the fire department. We'll be happy to try to walk you through it and provide additional information. Detectors are designed to go off before levels have a chance to make anyone sick. It's recommended to keep one detector near every room where people sleep. After more than a decade, Las Cruces gets ready to say hello to a new fire station. And the news just gets better. The new station means improved response times and a chance for you to save some money. The city broke ground last month on fire station number 7 at the corner of Zia and Crawford Boulevards on the West Mesa near the airport. It's been nearly 15 years since the city built a new station. This means increased response times for emergencies on the west side of town. And because of that, the city's insurance rating will improve, meaning residents could save some money on their homeowner's insurance. 
The city of Las Cruces is working to increase public safety by increasing the numbers of officers we have. And we're very close to having the average number of officers recommended for a city our size. The Las Cruces Police Department recently welcomed 13 new officers to the force early last month. The officers completed a 21-week academy that included more than 1,000 hours of training. This recent class of graduates puts Las Cruces very close to having the numbers of officers it needs. We are authorized up to 191 commissioned officers currently. We have 188. Uh, we also still have some officers that are or some applicants that are going through the, through the process, through the lateral process. It's my goal to have us up to 191 here relatively quickly or at least keep us at this level that we are right now. And it's important for us to have this number because we need to be able to respond to the needs of this community. And by having that high number of officers, it certainly allows us to do that. The department's next academy is scheduled for the coming fall of this year. If you're a business owner, Las Cruces codes officers may soon show up on your door. Your help is needed to beautify our city. The city will soon be kicking off a commercial landscaping campaign aimed toward business owners who need help recovering dead landscape. The campaign, which begins in April, will be a proactive program of education and outreach by codes enforcement towards businesses which lost landscape due to the freezes in February and December of 2011. First impressions are a lasting impression. Uh, people come into the city, first thing they see are these businesses before they even get into the residential neighborhood. So it is imperative that businesses have a well-maintained landscaping. It just looks good. People don't want to go into somewhere that if you're not maintaining the outside, Lord knows what the inside looks like. Business owners will be encouraged to bring their landscapes back into compliance of city code by the summer and next fall. The goal is to have an attractive and vibrant city. Another part of what will help improve the look of the city is renovating and beautifying the area near a major and heavily traveled road. Several years ago, the city was one of four cities in the U.S. to receive a grant from the Environmental Protection Agency to begin a public envisioning project. The project, picturing El Paseo, gathered input, ideas and thoughts for renovating and creating a new vibrant corridor for El Paseo. A few changes have been made so far, which include thicker medians in the roadways and more business development. More changes to the area will be dependent upon funding the city has for the area. Construction is going smoothly on new solar panels for the city's parking garage, and the best part of it is it's going to save the city money. The city held a groundbreaking ceremony in early December to kick off construction of the panels. They are being placed on the upper deck of the city hall parking garage. The panels will provide shade and reduce energy costs. The project will be complete by spring and is estimated to save the city about $23,000 a year on its electric bill. Are your kids looking to enter into some sports? The city has several sports leagues that are being offered. Registration begins February 11th for the Youth Sportsmanship Basketball League. You have until March 16th to register. Games are for kids in pre-K through 8th grade. The cost is $35 per player and games begin on April 22nd. For more information, call Mearsight Recreation Center at 541-2563. And as we mentioned earlier in our show, the Las Cruces Fire Department is about to get a new fire station, the first in more than 10 years. In this month's Ask The, we sat down with Las Cruces Fire Chief Travis Brown and heard how this new station could lower your insurance costs. It will now, again, should result, I, I have to be very cautious to say it will result because yeah. somebody will hold me accountable for that, <laughs> but it should result in insurance savings for both residential and commercial customers. Ask the premieres the first Saturday of the month at 7 p.m. right here on CLC TV after City Beat. If you'd like to receive important information related to the city, we'd like to remind you about our free notification system. The city offers the free service to residents who want to receive information on emergencies or other important information by phone, text, or email. Just go to the city's website at los-cruces.org and sign up. That's it for this episode of City Beat. Tune in to CLC TV for your latest city news and information. 
City Council meetings can be viewed live every Monday at 1 p.m. as well as archived video on CLCTV.com. And don't forget to like us on our City of Las Cruces Facebook page. I'm Denise LaFrance.